Broadcasting for the glory of God. Hi, this is Linda Hunt and the are you doing this Saturday morning? I am Linda Hunt, your host of the Marketplace Connection. And we are so glad that you would even tune in this morning to watch us. We are so glad that you have come to be a part of this viewing and listening audience. It is a glorious, glorious day, and we are so excited about what is going to take place. You know, I'm so excited every Saturday that I come before you. You know, I'm excited because I get excited about what God is saying in the marketplace. And the marketplace is a place that I believe that has been overlooked for so long as people believing that they have a gift and a talent and a purpose in the marketplace that God can use for, their, for, for his glory. But I want you to know, if you don't get anything else out of this program, that the marketplace is a place, that is a place where Jesus, the disciples, the apostles, where they went and their gifts went with them. They healed the sick, they raised the dead, they encouraged people, they did a lot of things in the marketplace. Jesus was one of the greatest marketplace connectors. And so we want you to know that you are a connector. God has placed you in businesses, in government, in families, in religion, in all of the spheres, media, all of the fears, that education, that you can use your gifts. Don't wait and sit and wait for some validation, waiting for somebody to tell you who you are and what you can do. God has already told you who you are. God has already given you a purpose. God has already has a plan for your life. And how can he get that plan to you if you won't participate? So we are here today participating. We're here today participating with our <laughs> gifts and our talents, bringing you what we believe will be a blessing to your life. So I want you to be encouraged. As I tell you every week, we want you to leap into your destiny, expand your capacity because God wants to give you more. I'm going to say that one more time. Leap into your destiny. Yes. Uh, upgrade your thinking first. Expand your capacity because God wants to give you more. You are more than what you have become. So today I have this wonderful, wonderful woman that is my guest. And she has, I'll tell you, so many gifts, so many talents, so many things. I've watched her over, oh, probably about two, three years now. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about, you know, some of the things that she does and who she is. And so I just want to welcome my friend, my Facebook friend, first of all, <laughs> and now my friend in, per in, in person, Miss Kimberly Richardson. Welcome to the Marketplace Connection. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. I am so excited to finally be here. I've been following you for a couple <laughs> of years, and, um, and you've been one of my greatest inspirations and Aww. so I'm just so so it's a blessing to be sitting here next to you oh thank you <laughs> oh well thank you Kim I am just uh, you know that just does my heart good when people tell you that they've been following you and that they have been inspired by you their book has been you know has been a blessing to them and and, and, and it is so wonderful to know that because you know a lot of times with in, in our own selves sometimes we don't you know we don't brag you know and you shouldn't you know you let other people that's what the Bible tells us, you know, let somebody else brag about you, but you still should feel, feel good about yourself. You, you still should feel like what God has called you to do, that it does matter. 
Okay, you matter, I matter, she matters, we all matter. And so sometimes when people give you those kind of accolades, you know, sometimes we can feel like, oh my God, I didn't know I was doing all of that. But I am just so blessed to know that. And it makes me feel like, you know, while you're doing what you're doing and you're being a blessing to other people, that it is just not, a, you know, it's not a small thing because you're planting seeds. Absolutely. You know, and when you plant a seed, it brings about a harvest. It brings fruit. And so, Kim, you are part of my fruit today. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> well, I thank God for you, and I thank God for your life and what he is doing with you. And so uh, we're going to talk about some of the things, uh, how Kim got where she is now, and some of the things that happened in her life, um, and some of the books that she has. Now, she has two books, so she got one up on me, and she's writing an anthology. So, you know, I got to get real busy now. <laughs> she didn't pass me up, but that's good. See, the student should be better than the teacher, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kim, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your background. I know uh, that you, at one time, was an assessor a real estate assessor, right? Yes. For the city of Detroit. Yes. And uh, something happened. Uh, tell us about, you know, what, what that was entailing uh, as far as you've been a real estate uh, assessor for the city. So, yes, I am a retired city of Detroit uh, appraiser of residential and commercial properties for property tax assessment purposes. And so I am, I was one of the people that you would probably come to talk to or see uh, if you had uh, a question or if you wanted to appeal your property taxes, uh, there's a certain time of the year that that's available for, uh, for you to do that. And so I would have been one of the people that you would have come to talk to. And uh, every year, you know, we pay taxes on our property. And Amen. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, so, yeah, we were responsible for doing the valuation for those properties. So anytime uh, there was a permit that was pulled to, to add an addition onto your property, if, if there was a fire and, you know, the property was damaged, then all of those will impact your, your property value. And it was... And we were responsible for uh, making sure that your the tax rolls uh, reflected your property taxes reflected whatever the change was. Uh, we were the ones responsible for doing that, mm -hmm. and so I enjoyed it. It was very it was a very uh, lucrative career. I was able to. Now, how long were you there? I was there. I actually did that for 16 years. That was the last wow. 16 years of my 26 year um, career with the city. Okay. And okay. Uh, yeah, it was uh, one of the, it was, I really enjoyed it. I was hands on. We were out there. Uh, we, you know, were out there in the mud and the snow with our <laughs> boots, uh, you know, measuring new construction because we would have to add that to the tax rolls. And, wow. and uh, it was um, one of the best experiences of my life. And, uh, but what happened, I so prior to me retiring, um, I, I always knew that there was more in me, that I, there was just uh -huh. something uh, that was just in me uh, and telling me that, you know, even though this job was a, a good career for me and I was able to raise my, my, my sons, and, uh, but I was always feeling like there was something else. Yes. There was something yes. else uh, that I know that maybe I should be doing. And so I was always um, trying to figure that out, mm -hmm. you know, during that time over right. the years. Right. And, um, and in the last couple of years before I retired, I was actually feeling, uh, you know, God kind of, What's you know, next? preparing me. <laughs> yeah. And I, so I was feeling a pull to, to leave. And mm. for a few reasons, um, it was a time, it was time for me to go. I was, I had did every, all that I had accomplished. I, I, I set all these goals for my, my life and, uh, and I had achieved those goals. And so I was looking for that next. So that was one of the reasons why I was inspired and looking uh -huh. forward to you know, taking that, that, that next step. Uh -huh. But then there was something else that was happening as well. And my mother, uh, she had dementia and me being her guardian, um, I, I, there were some things going on with her, 
and I knew that I, I had to get ready and get prepared for her, but I just didn't know in right. what capacity. But yeah. I, I knew I had to like start preparing and I was doing it. And mentally I was preparing to leave actually a couple of years before I left. Right. Yes. Yeah. I understand that, um, you know, when I, I know in my own career, <clears throat> I always was feeling like there, there's something else, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had great amenities, you mm -hmm. know. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't paid a car note in over 15 years. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, that, was, that was an amenity that okay. really kept me there because okay. of the fact that I drove a mm -hmm. brand new car, mm -hmm. um, whatever was the latest uh, car that was coming out, even before it came to the public, we were driving new cars, didn't have to pay. All I had to do was put gas in it, oh, didn't wow. have to pay insurance or anything. And, you know, and sometimes some of those amenities are some of the things that keep us in a place that you know, you know that there's more, you know that, like you said, you talked about what's next, mm -hmm. but yet those are the trinkets <laughs> that it keeps dangling before us. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, your benefit packages and, you know, whatever Amen. other, yes. you know, your insurance, you know, yes. your health insurance and all of those things, you know. But um, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago. I said your job is not your gift, but your gift is your job. Yes. Okay. And that means that God has given us a gift and thank God for jobs because somebody has to do a job. We understand that, you know, we still have to go into stores mm -hmm. and we still have to go and we have to buy things. But even even having a job while you're on that job, you need to be working your gift. You need to know what is it that you have called me in the earth for, which is your purpose. And God has given each and every one of us a purpose. And so while you're on that job, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you need to be at home, you know, studying or uh, researching, whatever it is, that next thing that you want to do. Because the time is coming, and it, I believe that we are here now. Uh, this pandemic is teaching us something. Yes, it is. Okay? Yes. Because there are some things that are not going to come back. There are some churches and some businesses and some organizations and a lot of things that are not going to come back after the pandemic. So I'm just saying, if you are in that place where you are feeling like I need to do more, I need an extra stream of income, you need to get busy because this is the time that you need to get busy. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. And so um, I, I know I visited the, um, because I own property in the mm -hmm. city of Detroit, so mm -hmm. I've been to the assessor. There's on the eighth floor, right? Yes, it is. I've been there many, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there many times. <laughs> yes, and uh, yes, so I, I know I'm very familiar with that particular mm -hmm. uh, department uh, for those of us that own uh, property in the city of Detroit. So I know it is a very uh, high, you know, traffic area, you know, with people coming and going, and particularly now after the economic fall mm -hmm. and people's property values and you know things that have fallen and you know people that just maybe can't afford the same taxes that they could last year mm -hmm. you know because we're living in a different world now yes we are it's not the same world 2019 uh, is it 2020 is not the same as 2019 and 2018 this is a whole different world that we're living in now so uh, I'm just saying people you know get ready to do what God has called you to do. Don't wait, stop procrastinating, stop waiting for someone else to, to validate you or to tell you, get busy. Um, there's all kinds of things on the internet now that you can just get involved in. And you just have to begin to you know, pray and ask God to give you a plan, give you something that you can research and begin to do it. So Kim, you said you felt the sting of ageism. Yes. Uh, when you were, um, you know, working at the uh, at the city. And so uh, something happened, I guess, uh, because I know you have a, a organization called the Shades. Uh, what is it? Shades of uh, Glory. So 50 Shades of Glory. Is that what it's called? Well, so so just for, uh, you know, people who may not be aware. So I am the founder of uh, 50 plus shades 50, of us. 50 plus. Okay. And so that is my that's my website. And that's the platform that I created uh, back in 2017 to, uh, to to actually start blogging and talking about some of my experiences and mm -hmm. to also encourage and inspire other 50 50 plusers or 50 and older people to like you know this this is my my experience and well well what is yours and you know what is it that you have in your heart to do well guess what 
you can still do that. So, you know, don't allow, you know, what society maybe, you know, would have us thinking that, well, you know, you're 50 and you're older and so, you know, you're, 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 you're not as useful, you uh -huh. know, as we, you know, as we were maybe when we were younger. And so, uh, and that's not true. We actually start living our lives at, at 50 and older because, you know, we're now in tune to who we are. Uh -huh. And, you know, before, you know, when we were in our 20s and 30s, you know, we were, you know, raising our children for those who had kids, you know, we, we were trying to figure things out. And so we're not the same people as we were when we were 20. We're not the same as we were when we were 30. And the same thing when you're 40. But when you're 50, there's just this, this you know, a light bulb or this thing that happens to you. Uh -huh. And so you no longer uh, are, you don't have to walk around and wait for people to validate you. Uh -huh. And, you know, you have a sense of self. And so you feel empowered to, you know, and, and emboldened to just, you know, uh, you know, be you and live your life and not make excuses for that. Uh -huh. And so that's what that, you know, so that's what my, my platform is really all about. But getting back to uh, the sting of ageism, so prior to me retiring from the city and even after I left, there was, you know, there was a shift. There was a okay. shift in um, the, uh, maybe the, the public as far as, so, you know, uh, Dan Gilbert uh, was very uh, instrumental in, you know, bringing a lot of attention to uh, a lot of the, uh, the new things that was going on in downtown Detroit. Uh -huh. And so there was this, um, there was this push and this talk about, you know, bringing in a younger, you know, demographic. And so, mind you, uh, many of us that were working for the city or even working in the downtown area, we have been doing that for years. And so we, we kind of had, you know, dominated that, you know, that area. And so there was this talk about, oh, you know, we, we're, we're looking for younger people. And so I Ooh. saw that. But... Um, Sting of ageism is really uh, age discrimination, and okay. so I really didn't, I didn't really have that experience so much when I was working as I did after I retired and I started, you know, looking, you know, for part-time work because, so this is, you know, how I got to where I am now. So I had this big plan, right, as we all do, you know, after retirement, I'm going to do A, I'm going to do B, I'm going to do C. And so I was really like, you know, my, my plan after retirement, oh, I want to, I want to go work at, um, at Lowe's. Uh, so I, how close I, were you to retirement? Um, well, I left after 26 years, but I, I, so I did an early retirement, you okay. know, we were able to do that after 25. And so when I came out, but so I had this grandiose plan. Oh, I'm just going to retire. I'm going to pick up a part time job, mm -hmm. you know, to help supplement my retirement. And mm -hmm. then I'm just going to live comfortably and just do whatever, you know, I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, <laughs> you know, God has a way of really like showing you and, and, you know, just, you know, taking you out of your comfort zone. And so that didn't happen. Uh, those jobs that I thought that I was going to get, um, that's, it was those, you know, times that I experienced, you know, that discrimination. And it's not something that, you know, that is said, you know, like blatantly, but it's, yeah, you know, it's, you can, you, you, you feel it's it. It's not overt. It's mm -hmm. not overt. You feel mm -hmm. it. And it's the way that they talk to you. It's the way that they treat you. And, wow. um, and so that is where that experience uh, came from. But like I said, I had this, you know, master plan and it was um, two weeks after I retired, I actually got a call from the assisted living facility that my mother was in. She had been there for four years and they pr pretty much gave me a, a, a two week notice to uh, make arrangements for her. Now mind you, I knew that I had to get ready. I knew that God was preparing me for something, and I knew that I had to maybe do something for my mom because at that time, uh, in that last year and a half, she had been falling a lot and having a lot of falls, and uh -huh. so, and that was you know their reason for uh, 
you know, given me that, that notice that they were going to release her or, dis or discharge her because she had been having more frequent falls uh -huh. and they didn't feel that they could keep her safe. And so, mind you, so two weeks into my retirement, I, I was thinking I had maybe a couple of months to kind of prepare. Uh -huh. And so that call came two weeks after and then I had to kind of like shift and I had to go into, wow, what am I going to do, you know, about my mother? She had been in an assisted living facility and you can't just put you know, people who, uh, who need 24-hour supervision, you can't just put them anywhere. My home at the time, um, it, was, it, it, it wasn't set up, you know, for that at that time. Mm -hmm. But um, I knew that I just wanted to love on my mother. I, I just felt that she just needed to be loved on. I didn't know how much time I had with her. And you so, know my child? I know it's five. It's, I'm I'm the uh, second oldest of five kids, and so. But it was uh, my 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 oldest brother, myself, and my sister. We it was the three of us that was more involved in her okay. in her care over the years because even though she was in an assisted living facility, she had the dementia like, like you know for the last seven years prior. Mm -hmm. So I ended up making a decision to bring her home because I wanted, I wanted, I felt like she just needed to be around, you know, her family and she right. needed to be, she just needed to be loved and I wanted to love on her. Okay. And so I did that and then I had to, you know, put things in place to, to get the home set up for that and, and I pretty much became her caregiver for, um, and I, I was able to keep her for one year. Uh, before I had to, I was forced to like, you know, move her because she had declined uh, in that one year to the point to where no matter how much I loved her or loved on her and how much I, I you know, uh, was able to do for her, um, I couldn't provide the, the type of care that she needed. And even though, you know, I had doctors coming out to the house, I was taking her to a daycare three days a week so she can have that socialization. Um, so even though, you know, all of these things were in place. Um, so your plans, in other words, got my plans put, uh, got on the back, put on, on the back, back burner. burner, yes. Okay. And so it was that experience that, um, you know, inspired me to do the book about her and that experience. Um, even when I was in it, um, the, so what know. is the what is the, the so name the of, of so the book? the book that I wrote about that experience um, is called My Mother's Keeper. Okay. And the book is about is uh, my struggle is a daughter's struggle with balancing love, care, and protection for her mother battling dementia. And so uh, I knew that I had to talk about it. As a matter of fact, when I was in that, uh, you know, God put yes, God put mm -hmm. on my heart to. He, you know, the Spirit told me to that I needed to tell her story, and so while I was in it, it was, it was hard, it was too much. It was hard for me to actually write about it. So I would just journal, and I would just, you know, put, you know, journal some of some mm -hmm. of my, you know, experiences. So that's, that's how your journaling and my journaling started from that. Started it started from my journaling, yes, and it started from uh, a desire that I had to just share with other people what that experience is and what that looks like because we hear so much from other people that, oh yeah, so-and-so had it, you know, I know somebody, you know, we all know somebody or, you know, that n know somebody that had it, but we never really hear the, you know, the details, that the inside information. And that's what I wanted to uh, share with people and, and give them an inside view of what that looks like. Okay. Um, in the book, it's talking about, um, for those of you that might be experiencing, I don't want to take anything for granted. Um, I believe when I bring people to the broadcast that there is always somebody out there that might be able to, um, that is sharing some of the same things that people um, that are on, um, uh, on my broadcast that might be going through. So there are three common types of dementia. Um, I knew about uh, dementia, and um, then there's Alzheimer's disease. There's a vascular dementia. Yes. And then there, I don't know how you pronounce this word. That's pseudo pseudomentia. Pseudomentia. Yes. Okay. And then there is a cause of a transient. Well, they call that TIA, but the, TIA. Three, the three common types of dementia, the number one call, uh, type of dementia is Alzheimer's. And okay. Alzheimer's is... Um, is, is 
not curable uh, right now. Oh, really? uh, yes. Okay. Now there are different. There are other types of dementia that uh, can be treated, and it can reverse. Um, you know, it can be reversed, mm -hmm. and um, some of those are the, the the vascular or the pseudo dementia. But if it's Alzheimer's, uh, that is, there's not. You know, that's just untreatable, and um, and that's probably seventy percent of uh, the number one types of dementia now. Right, mm -hmm. right. And you know, a lot of times when people have, um, and even now, it's common, uh, mental illness. Period. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much at this particular time, a lot of mental illness that's out there, and, and not just older people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are younger people that have mental illness. Uh, there's younger people that I don't know if Alzheimer is just considered a, um, a disease that is for older people. Um, I, don't, I don't know, you know, is that something that's more common, I would say, among older people, it, is that correct? It's, yes, it's more common uh, for, for, for older people, but um, it's hitting more people at a younger age now. And oh, so really? there's, there are like, some, there, there are causes for that. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, stress, uh, and depression, some, some medication. So, for example, like my mother, uh, she had hypertension. And so for years, she had been, you know, uh, taking medication for that to treat that hypertension. And a lot of times with that hypertension, you know, in my research when I was writing a book, um, that could lead to other um, ailments such as I didn't realize that my mother had high cholesterol mm. and so um, you know so it was a you know combination of the the hypertension the high cholesterol and but in my mother's case because it was hard to try to pinpoint exactly what the cause of it was and, and just for uh, people who may not be aware Alzheimer's, they really, is not really diagnosed until after the person uh, is, is, uh, is, is no longer here or passed. And so it's really not until they do an autopsy, an autopsy of the brain that they, really? they, can, they can determine that it, that it is Alzheimer's. But what they're doing now is so, and because yeah. dementia is so broad, because there's different types of dementia, like right. we just mentioned a few, but because of the broadness of it, uh, you know, when a when when the patient is being treated for dementia, and you know, and if it's if it's years that they've lived with it, and and you know, doctors see that they're steady declining, and it becomes clear that there's they're not getting better, and there's no cure, because you know they have medication to slow the progression of it, but it's only after years of treatment and is and it's steady declining that they finally, you know, just uh, label it Alzheimer's uh, because it makes it easier for, insur for insurance purposes to cover cost of treatment and, and, you know, all those things that come with that. Okay. And so that's why they just call it Alzheimer's because at, at some point in time it becomes clear that, uh, that you know, that's it's, it's untreatable. And not only that, but there's tests that show, so for example, my mother, um, she had the MRI and the MRI showed the uh, you know, the, the, the damage that was done to, you know, in the brain. And so clearly they were able to... How old was your mom when she had? My mother was, um, she passed, uh, she, she would be 76 now. Uh, she passed four years ago, but when she was diagnosed with a dementia, she, she had just turned, she wasn't even 62 yet. So, and it was during a time in her life where um, she was really stressed. She had lost her home. She had gotten laid off from her job. And so mm. that took her into a depression. And a lot mm. of times that, that depression and then she had to be on um, medication for that, I, I believe it took that her into it quicker than, mm -hmm. you know, she would have had it. Now, having said that, Alzheimer's do run in my family, it runs on her side of the family. So I've had okay. uncles and aunties who have passed also from Alzheimer's, but then there was another um, component uh, to uh, my mother's situation. She actually had a mini stroke, and so mm. that mini stroke was never detected. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they were able to see that with an MRI. So there were, you know, there was a few a few causes of right. of, her, of her having that. And uh, but I I believe you know the number one cause was um, the 
the the high stress level and the depression and medications and um, all of that that I, I believe took her into it sooner than um, than later. Wow. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, when you uh, were talking about um, you know generational as what I believe that they are, when you see patterns in families, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's dementia, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's poverty, whether it's drugs. Whatever those things are, when you see those kind of patterns, that, that is what is called generational curses. Mm -hmm. You know, those are things that have been set up um, by the enemy um, and a generation down through the years, and you'll see that same pattern uh, throughout. The, but, you know, we as believers, we have, you know, the power to believe God. Um, and, on, and all we can do is confess and believe and decree and declare um, that we break those generational curses. And that's why it's so important that we come into the knowledge of the Word of God. Of, of, yes. It's so important that you come into the knowledge of the things of God because uh, like the Bible says, you know, that, that Satan can take advantage of us, you know, because for our lack of knowledge, that we don't understand things that we see and we take for granted or we just think that, you know, oh, this is just happening and I, I don't have any in control over. Yes, you do. And you have the control by the word of God, <laughs> by the power of the Holy Spirit to break those generational curses off of your family. So I just, you know, want to um, say that. Uh, for those of you that are watching that, you know, go back in your bloodline. I had to go back into my bloodline. I had to see some things that I saw by the Spirit of God, uh, that God had quickened in my spirit, that he had awakened me uh, to see that there were some patterns here and that um, they had been in generations prior to me. But um, God will, he'll, he'll show if it's only one person that he will use to be able to break those curses in your family. So, you know, take time when you're praying. Take time to seek the Lord about some of those things that might be in your family that are generational curses and begin to take the word of God and to break those curses over your family so they won't go down to the next generation. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you do want to, um, you know, uh, uh, get this book. Where can they get this book? Uh, we got another book we're going to talk about. <laughs> so but where can they get this book? So. Uh, this book can be purchased. You can get it on Amazon or you can go to my website, which is 50plusshadesofus.com and you can order the book on my website. And uh, so, yeah, it's available, uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and um, or, you know, by going to the website. Okay. Yes. My Mother's Keeper, we do want you to get it. A Daughter's Struggle with Balancing Love, Care, and protection for her mother battling dementia. It could be your mother, it could be your father, it could be your sister, your brother, but the same applies, you know, to uh, either of your family members, either of your loved ones. Get this book. I'm sure it would be a blessing to your life. So you believe that people can still be on a discovery after 50 years old? Oh, always, always, Miss <laughs> Linda, yes. Uh, and so that's what I did uh, after I you know, went through that journey with my mother and I had to uh, move her again, uh, place her in, a, in a, uh, another facility. Um, I had that opportunity to find me like, okay, what should I be doing? And um, now I've always, you know, had this thing, you know, in my, in my head um, years, years before uh, even while I was working, and I actually, uh, that seed was planted. When I, I read a book by Rick Warren called uh, The Purpose Driven Life. Mm -hmm. and I think it was, everybody read that <laughs> book. Churches, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and it was after reading that book that I realized, I was like, wow, I don't have to stay on this job. I don't have to work to, um, to, for 30 years. I don't have to work, you know, 35 and 40 years. It's like, you know, God has purpose for us and, you know, instead of, you know, doing like we've been taught, you know, oh, you know, you have you have longevity on the job. And uh, instead of me following that, I had already told myself, I was like, OK, by the time um, I, you know, get 25 years in, then I want to have a plan. I want to I want to know what what else is out here for me to do, you know, what has God purpose for me? And so that seed had already been planted. 
And so I so was. So did you know that you were going to be doing this? I had no idea. <laughs> no, I didn't. I did not. And so that's the you know wonderful thing about where I am now in my journey. So, like I said, I I I, I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, we all have these plans. You know, we make these plans for our lives. And um, but uh, when I when I didn't you know get that part time job, you know um, I. That was God's way of showing me. God had other plans for me, and he took me out of my comfort zone. And so, and when I say he took me out of my comfort zone, it was two years after I was retired when I started, like, dibbling and dabbling in, in different areas of, of uh, things that I enjoy, trying to find out where my purpose was, where I fit. And Man. it was during that time that I ended up losing my health care benefits uh, I lost all of my benefits from the city that I was looking forward to uh, when the city filed bankruptcy. And and I was, you know, feeling like, wow, I was like, God, um, why, you know, I worked hard for this. I, 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 um, I invested in myself. You know, we were, you know, we were raised, you know, we were raised and taught, you know, you go to school. You know, you, you, you get your degree, get you a get job. a good job, and you stay on that job. And then, you know, I invested in, you know, in, in my annuity and all of that. And at the time, the city had, you know, one of the best uh, benefits. Uh, and, you know, that was that was really around in your, in your major cities. And we had one of the top benefits because our incomes were not as compatible as it was in a private sector at that time so over those years and so that's that's what you know motivated us to kind of like stay you know because of the benefits and so when all of that was stripped and I was like wow you know but fortunately you know I, I you know was married and my husband had health care uh -huh. but uh, during that time when that happened I felt I was angry I got angry and I felt like I, I felt a certain kind of way I, I felt bamboozled I felt you know hoodwinked I'm like you know what is going on and so it was during that discovery when I, you know, worked here, I did a little bit here, and, you know, I realized now looking back that God had other, he had bigger and better plans for me. It wasn't meant for me to just, you know, work a little part-time job and, and be comfortable, you know, like I, like most of us think. That's, that's, and, that's the operative yes, word. Yes. That's the operative <laughs> word right there, is that most of us, me included, <laughs> we want to be comfortable. And, you, you know, we don't really want to, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? We don't, we, we don't really, we, we want the best that God has for us. But it takes, it, it takes work. It takes dedication. And most of the times, you know, because we had a job, mm -hmm. we were so used to going to our desk or our our department and you're sitting down, you already know what you're supposed to do. You already everything is laid out for everything you, in other words. Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So but when 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 God pulls you out of that comfort zone of where you are and you're out there and you, you you're feeling like and that's why he, he said, I know the plans I have for you that are good and not evil, that I can bring you to your expected end. So he already knows. Why are you running around? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to figure it out? Why are you trying to, you know, do mm -hmm. all these other little things? Okay, I'm going to do this for a minute, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. And everything that you try, it looks like it's just not working. It just don't fit. Right. It just don't feel good. It just is not really what you want. You know, and you know it. But a lot of times we just really... Uh, keep going back to that that same place that that same uh, you know uh, thing that we're trying to do, and uh, it, it's not working because what you really got to do is seek God and say, God, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> I need you to tell me what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. a amen. Yes. And and once you do that, mm -hmm. once you settle in and just give up. <laughs> and say, say, I give, I yield. God will begin to tell you what he wants for you. And he'll lead you to people. So you really got to be, while you're praying, you got to be aware. You got to be alert. 
you got to know when you when you meet when you know because there, there, there's there's something that God gave me when this is when I was still on my job. He said there's a divine intervention for a, a no a divine introspection for a divine intersection. Okay, and so when you meet people, you got to know that you have cooked up with this person. And God is saying something to you, and that person is giving you some things and ideas and, you know, and things are beginning to click in your mind, and you're trying to figure it out. Okay, God, is this the person? So you got to be really discerning to know when God brings you in the presence of that person that he wants you to hook up with. And you can't be afraid. You got to take some chances in life. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. And we we so busy trying to stay we're so comfortable. We so busy trying to stay comfortable. You got to take some chances. Yes. I took a chance when I came here. Mhm. Mm this is out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. This was not really where I intended to be. You know, and um I had done sales for over, you know, 15 years, well, it was longer than 15 years. Mm -hmm. I was in the automobile industry for 15 years, mm -hmm. but I really had done sales pretty much most of my life. And so when I came here, it was like uh, wait a minute, this is right. not what I want to do, you know, uh -huh. and, and so it was just that, you know, a step by step by step, and God, but God had a greater purpose, because my purpose is to do what I'm doing to encourage you, and to bring people like you that can come here, that can encourage the audience of what, you know, uh, uh, my gift is really the marketplace ministry, that, that's really where I work, you know, that's really my best gift. So, you know, going on, you know, with what you were doing and you were saying that you were angry. And I understand. Yes, I was. I was, <laughs> I was angry and I was like, I was feeling a certain kind of way. And I remember uh, one particular uh, evening, uh, I called a girlfriend of mine that I grew up with. And um, she, she's out in uh, the California area. And so I remember having a conversation with her, and I was I was sharing with her. I was like, you know, you know, we've done all of this, and I just feel like I'm, I'm just feeling a certain kind of way. I'm fe I'm feeling like all the things that you know we were looking forward to is not really you know the way that you know is not really that we go. intended it to go. Uh -huh. And so she shared with me. She was like, you know, I I talked to three other friends of mine. And, you know, they were talking about the same thing. And so mm -hmm. we were all like feeling like, wow. And so then, you know, being the creative people that we are, I'm, I'm a very, you know, I'm creative and that's my, uh, my gift. But so we were like, wow, what do we do about that? And then I said, you know what, maybe we should start a movement. You know, maybe we should, we need to start a movement. And she said, yeah, we can do that. We can put together a seminar. I said, okay, we got to come up with a name. We got to come up with a name, something that's catchy, you mm. know, to draw people in. And so, yeah, we're going to do this. And so we made this plan to, you know, uh, the following year, we were going to, you know, do this seminar, you know, women and men. And so we haven't done that yet, but I know that that's coming. Okay. And so I went to bed that night mm -hmm. and when I woke up, and it was sometime in the middle of the night because I get, you know, a lot of times when, when uh, you know, God is uh, talking to me, you know, through the Holy Spirit, is usually doing an early morning hours. It's like 3, yeah. 4, 5 in the morning. I'm yeah, like yeah. waking That's up. That's why I it, don't. It is, yeah, I, I, it's either a dream that I had and I wake mm -hmm. up and I'm like, oh, wow, I got to make sure, you know, I, I, I write this down. And so I remember, you know, waking up in the middle of the night. And so I, I had this, you know, thought and I was like, 50 plus, I was like 50 plus, and I some came up with shades of us, and I was like, wow, okay, so then what is what does that mean? <laughs> what do I do with this? And so it was from that, you know, that was birthed into me, that 50 plus shades of us, and then I came up with an acronym for shades, and I was like, okay, um, this is, you know, this is, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use this, and, sh and shades is an acronym for showing how age doesn't end seasons. And so it was from there that I, you know, built this website. Showing how. Showing how age mm -hmm. doesn't end seasons. Okay. And so that speaks to being 50 and older. And, you know, we still, we, we're, we, I want to encourage and inspire other people to hey, you know, what is it that you have in your heart? What is it that, you, you know, God purposed in your heart or that you feel, you know, um, that you're being pulled towards? Well, you know, you got to recognize that and know that that's God, you know, speaking to you and letting you know that 
he has he still has purpose for you so there's still some things for you to do and so I use my platform to blog and put those stories out there to talk about that and to let people know you know don't you know don't don't give up on your dreams you know yeah you might not feel like it you know but let me help encourage you we still have purpose as long as he's waking us up there's still work for us to do and so that's what I did over the last few years so is this for 50 plus women it's for it, it, it's for really men and women. Okay. Yes. All right. It's for men and women who are 50 and older. Um, and so I'm really, you know, the platform is really for, you know, us, you know, boomers or, you know. Baby boomers. Our baby, our, our, okay. the boomer generation. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the things have you done any workshops or anything like that that um, or is it just a website right at this point right now it's a website um, but I've I have in the you know last you know two and a half years I've been involved and I've done uh, mentorship programs I've been in coaching programs to help guide me and put me on the path that I'm on now and so it was from my 50 plus shades of us okay. platform that I actually that uh, was birthed into me uh, shades of glory okay. and so it's my shades of glory uh, that is actually my book coaching program now that's um, you know it's spun for my 50 plus Tell shades of us platform you. so you can yeah so I can be reached at 50 plus shades of us .com, which is the website and you can uh, see all the information regarding my shades of glory book coaching program I can also be reached at uh, my email is info at 50 plus shades of us .com. and uh, you can you know go to my email um, or go to the website and for those who are interested in being a part of my current book project which is called shades of glory uh, it's an anthology. It's an anthology that I'm currently working on, and the the book is not complete yet. But the title of the book is called SOS. So SOS is a, a, a distress call, and we, you know, living in the times that we're living in now with this pandemic, you know, this is a call to for people, you know, sending out an SOS. SOS stands for sharing our story. So I, I want to help other people get their stories out there so we can continue to encourage uh, other people to keep going, keep living, don't give up. God still has purpose in your life. And the name of this book project is called SOS. We're sharing our stories and we're giving God the glory. And that's what God wants. He's waiting on his people. He's waiting on us to to talk about how how the, how good he's been in our lives to so talk about those stories that may not always um, make you feel good but those stories that that brought you through and so we are living testament he wants us to be a testament to his power to his grace to his glory and that's what this book project does and that's what it's about is not only um, is 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 you know sharing our story so that God can get the glory and you know because we want to draw people back to God mm -hmm. but it's also an opportunity for people to uh, create a stream of revenue because once you uh, are part of a a book uh, once you author a book or a part of a collaboration uh, uh, um, in a book it opens up doors and opportunities for you to be on other people's platforms it opens up other doors and opportunities so you never know where that road is going to lead you and mm -hmm. so that's how I'm able to, uh, that's how I was able to be here now uh, because of the people that was put in my path to help me share my story about my mother to help me become a part of a, a another book anthology called Unstoppable Gems and I was able to now this was your project this is a uh, project oh. that I did with actually my uh, publisher Charlotte Howard of uh, Heart-Centered Women Publishing, we uh, got together with six other phenomenal women to, uh, you know, to talk about um, how we are unstoppable. And so we're, we're just showing people how, you know, we, we're just, 
you know, we're we're walking, we're we're walking in purpose, we're living okay. on purpose. I got okay. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. This was the first one that you were a part of. What you are doing now is your your project. This right. was not your project. Right. So this was a project that I jumped on. Um, and it was because of this experience with this project on Unstoppable Gems that I was like, wow, the power of collaboration. Okay. And so that inspired me to want to uh, put together, put your together own my own project to help other people uh, get their stories out there. Okay. So Unstoppable Gems, uh, you were uh, in collaboration with how many women? It was uh, it's seven other women. Seven other women. Yes. Okay. And Unstoppable Gems is the name of this particular book, and it's a beautiful cover. Uh, women uh, just like you sharing what they live and do. And do. Yes. Okay. And so all of these women are. Um, I know one of the women that a uh, woman that I had on my broadcast before, mm -hmm. and uh, so. But um, all of these women. Um, are entrepreneurs as well. Yes. Okay. And so, and that's very true because I am in the process of uh, writing my own anthology with 15. I am the executor producer of that particular project. And um, I am, um, it's 15 women besides myself, so 16 of us. And that is the purpose as well mm -hmm. um, to let people know that I, a book can be a stream of income. You just think, getting a book and you wrote the book and yeah and that's a wonderful accomplishment but the thing of it is you can take that book it's the message that you take from that book and you can make it into uh, workshops you can do online courses uh, you can do uh, you know workshops and uh, different things that you can do uh, to make streams of income from your book so we want for those of you that have your journals at home and you've been writing like I did for years and years, and you take all of those things, and your story is your story. A lot of the women, even some of the women, and we have a variety of writers in, in, in uh, the particular anthology that I have called Gathering the Fragments That Nothing Would Be Lost. And, and that's what we do with our lives. Mm -hmm. we, we have to go back and gather the fragments that nothing would be lost because just like in that, that particular scripture that you know the, uh, the uh, Spirit of the Lord had given me, uh, for the uh, foundation of my book is that we have more left over than we did when we started because we're still here. We still have, um, you know, we're still alive. We still have purpose. And so you still have more to give, even though you've gone through your fragments. And so uh, we want you to um, look out for that as well. Uh, the Gathering the Fragments should be out sometime in about September. Oh, wow. We want you to, um, you know, look at uh, Unstoppable Gems. Uh, you know, you can get in touch as Kim has given, given your address one more time, how you, they can get in touch with you. Go to www.50plusshadesofus.com. That's 50plus shadesofus.com. Or go to info, my email, info at 50plus shadesofus.com. Right, right. And, you know, another thing that a, uh, a book or a chapter, because you can take the chapter mm -hmm. and make it into your book. So, and, and a lot of women that never had the experience of writing, which some of the women that are a part of my anthology, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, they're taking that one chapter and, you know, we, we're writing it so, you know, we leave it with a cliffhanger so they can take that particular book, uh, that particular uh, chapter rather, and they can make that into their book because they kind of ended it with a suspense to let, okay, what, what else happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where else is this going? Right. And so we, we did it for that purpose because we want people to, you know, be able to take our book, our chapter rather, and now we're going to make it into our book. And there's money out there to be made. It's all kind of things that you can do. Once you do that, you get your website, you know, you can sell products on your website. And so, you know, this is what we do to try and encourage you all to know that, you know, life can begin at 50, it can begin at 60, it can be begin at 70. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's not about the age. It's not about how old you are. It's really about you getting busy and doing what God has called you to do and fulfilling your life and being prosperous. Okay, God wants us to be prosperous. And so a book can help you. It's, one, it's just one of the streams. And once you get started on that, God will open up other doors. He'll give you other ideals, but you got to start somewhere. 
and I'm a living example. I, I, I'm sitting here now next to this woman <laughs> who has been, uh, oh, she has been such a great inspiration to me. Uh, and, and if I may, I just, I just want to okay. read. So I just have to, I just wanted to read and share with you, uh, how I was inspired by Ms. Linda Hunt's oh Amen God. Sister book that she published. Uh, it, 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 it published last year, right? 2018. In 2018. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I purchased it and I read it, uh, last year in March of 2019. And so this was what I wrote in my journal after finishing her book. I just finished reading Linda Hunt's journal, Amen Sister. God, it really blessed my soul. The intercessory prayer at the end brought tears to my eyes because it summed up in a prayer by Linda, all I have, I have been seeking and praying and striving to do. That above all things that I may prosper, that I become whole in my body. And this is Linda's prayer in the book. So for, for those of you who haven't purchased that book, um, this was her prayer. That above all things that I may prosper, that I become whole in my body, soul, and spirit, that I learn to love myself just as God loves me and created me to be that I use my talents and gifts to reach and help others, no matter what color, creed, or culture. And finally, that the vision God has placed inside of me comes full term to birth and not be aborted. Mm. And I wrote, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. That is so wonderful. Thank you, Kim. Thank you that so book, much. Oh, my God. That blesses my soul because, you know, a lot of times when you're doing things, you don't really know, you know, who you're blessing. You don't even really think that, you know, people are going to be blessed. You're just doing what God has called you to do. So thank you so much. That is that is really a wonderful, wonderful tribute. Thank, to the glory of God. Thank you, and thank you to, you know, your, your scribe publishing. And it's because of you, it's because of, you know, people who have led, you know, the, the led a trail for us to follow. It's because of you that inspired me to, to do the same. And, and what I wrote in this book is what I hope to also leave people with. Um, that legacy that we can leave to our children and our grandchildren Amen. and beyond. That's and right. that's that gift. And um, everybody has a story, so that's the beautiful thing. Anybody, everybody has a story. Right. And you can use our platforms, you can use my platform to, right. to share your story because you know, that's what we're here for. We're that's actually, right. you know, walking, we're, we're living testimonials. You know, we're, we're, we're living letters. That's right. And walking so epistles. we're walking epistles. That's yes. right. That's right. Amen. And, uh, I'm just so honored and I, oh. I thank God. And, uh, you know, it's amazing uh, how far I've come in Amen. just this short time. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you, Kim. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Oh, my God. That's been a blessing. I'm going to bring your tears to my eyes. <laughs> Well, we hope that um, you, um, you know, have gotten something out of this. I'm talking about Alzheimer's and dementia. For those of you that have either experienced uh, that with your loved ones, we hope that you uh, have been blessed today by that. We hope that you've heard something in the terms of business and entrepreneurship and, you know, being able to be prosperous in the streams of income. We hope that all of these things that have been said, because that's why we get up on Saturday morning and we want to be a blessing to you. And I do want to remind you that Amen Sister is available. I got a fresh uh, shipment that came in last week. And so for those of you that want the book and want to be inspired, <laughs> like, like Kim has been inspired, we want you to get our book because it's a journal but I leave room for you to journal, and I do. It is bathed with the Holy Spirit and with scriptures, with the Word of God, and that's what set me free. So we thank those of you that have watched us today. We pray that you have been blessed. 
We thank you for getting up on Saturday mornings. Remember, get up, like, share, tell people about this program because we have many gifts that God has given us in the body that will be able to come to this broadcast and be a blessing to you. Okay? So we thank you for watching. This has been the Marketplace Connection. I thank you, Kim, so much for being my beautiful, wonderful guest this morning. Thank we you. thank you, the Morning Connector, Saturday Morning Connectors. We will see you again next week. And remember, Leap into your destiny, upgrade your thinking, expand your capacity because God wants to uh, give you more. We know that you are more than what you have become. We'll see you again next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. God bless you. God bless. International. Broadcasting for the glory of God.